Ta-da! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, another Stephen King review. Two in two weeks. Wow, is it my birthday? No, it isn't, but you guys do get two Stephen King reviews. I reviewed The Shining last week if you want to go check that out. Link in the description. But here we go. This is the sixth book in The Dark Tower, which, as you guys might know, I'm slightly, slightly infamously, like, known for kind of hating on this series. Not hating, but not, not exactly liking it either. Stephen King is probably, well, no, not probably, he is my favorite author. He's brilliant in every possible way. But this series, I've not liked it that much. It's kind of been like on my low list. If I ever do like a fantasy top five or something, that'd be on my number five because I've only read like five fantasy series, you know? I've got all the books right up there, so if you want, I can just really quickly go over what I thought of each book. Yeah, you can't see it, but it's the first book, The Gunslinger, which I thought was confusing and not that great, but it's, it's okay. And the drawing of three, which I thought was okay, it's, it's fine, it's a Stephen King boy, but nothing really interesting happened. Number three, which was The Wastelands, was probably my favorite so far because it was actually an interesting ending, but it was still a really slow and boring ending that I, you know, it was, it was, it was fast and exciting a little bit, but it's still really boring compared to like other books that he's written. Then Wizard of Glass became my favorite book because I was forced to read in a very short amount of time and it was, just its own enclosed novel and I love that about it. Then we have number six or five, which is Wolves of the Cal, which I think is my least favorite book because it just it's one of the longest and it's really useless, completely useless, very, very boring, nothing really interesting happens. If they're just waiting for something to happen that entire book and it's really lame to me. So then what did I think of the song Susanna? Well I'm gonna have to go with the upper rating this. Maybe my second favorite book of the entire series, probably my first. It's it's actually like a good book, finally, because I'm actually so excited because we finally got a good Dark Tower book. I might be actually liking this series again. Yes! This is the book that is notoriously known for being very, very divisive. People who love the series think that this book is really bad. People who don't like the series think that this book is the best. It's either at the top of the list or at the bottom of the list. And I understand why it's at either side, because it's not exactly the most fantasy specific epic you know the rest of them they're very very fantasy driven that makes sense this one they kind of leave and it's chill in the real world for a little bit of time and so because of that we get like a really important segment of the story that is really really important like you cannot go without this because so much important stuff happens and it's that it's literally the entire book is the important stuff happening and because i'm a fan of stephen king's classic works where he comes into the real world and he really does like monsters and stuff in the real world where it's not just a fantasy because i think i'm really like tired of fantasy right now like i've been reading way too much fantasy stormlight whoo killing me but this one we finally get like a really solid normal style book and I, I don't understand what's really going on with Callahan and Jake that one was kind of confusing me because I'm like this is really boring and there's not that many parts for these guys but it was really relatively boring then we have we have three different segments we have the Callahan and Jake which doesn't really exist but it, where it did exist it was really boring we had Susanna and then we had the two other boys the Roland and Eddie and yeah that's about it so these two are the ones I'm gonna talk about specifically so the song of Susanna obviously Susanna's got the important role here and most people, I don't think, like this one too much. I didn't mind it, you know, it wasn't like, here's the thing, if it was bad, then I would have had a problem with it, but it's not exactly good. So, it's not exactly great, is what I mean. It's a totally fine story, and if it was longer, then I would have absolutely hated it. I think that's what happened with Wolves of the Kella. It was a small story with such a small significance, and so I hated that it was that long. But this one, it has a certain amount of significance that's not obviously as big as any of the other books, but, it's the shortest book in the series, I believe. Maybe like third shortest or something. So it really fills up that gap really, really well. Susanna's character really does a really big, you know, deep dive into the world, into the really big, important conflict going on with her, as you know if you've read the series so far. And I wouldn't exactly call it, you know, boring or exactly like, you know, going out on a different direction that you didn't expect. But, you know, I've never seen a story like this. This is completely an original story. And so there wasn't really any, you know, new thing that you would expect to see you know like there's not anything that you're already expecting to see you're expecting to go into this seeing a new one so what you get is exactly that there's nothing brand new about the story every other story has been like clearly derived from some other archetype you know obviously because they're very classical fantasy stories this one is not that i haven't seen another story like this before ever, maybe in like some small ways, but this is like very, very original. What has been annoying me about this story for a long, long time is the magic system, which usually I'm a fan of soft magic systems, but not when they're just like popping up everywhere like this and we don't understand why and they just show up and we just use them and it's like at least like have it from the beginning 
and foreshadow it or something, but it's just it just pops up. For example, the turtle, which it's not a spoiler because you don't understand it until you read the book. It's like good omens. Like you're not gonna understand it until you finish it, right? But turtle, that is a very weird magic system, and I'm like waiting for it to be really well explained, but it's like not. You got the explanation. It's like a 10 second explanation. Just roll with it. Don't forget about it. And it really annoys me because this stuff is really important to the story and it's just kind of be, it's just kind of like tossed off very often. So the magic is kind of annoying me in this story. This is where it really kind of started to annoy me because a lot of new magic systems just like popped up and it's really weird. And one other thing that I'm going to forget about later on, but it's important, which is that there's one specific thing that happens in this story that is a very similar, not very similar, but slightly similar to the story of it where it's just one thing that happens that it draws a very interesting similarity. It's not that important. But in this book, Stephen King calls it out and compares it to that thing that happens in It. You'll know if you read it, you'll understand because he specifically like writes it out in the story like this happened in It, basically. And that really annoyed me, which is, don't get me wrong, that's an interesting comparison. I, I'm good with that kind of comparison. But if you're trying to draw like an epic fantasy thing, then you're calling out like your own book in the middle of this and it's not like the book it it's like a book that you may be familiar with and so that specifically is like well I feel like that's really out of place and although I enjoyed it I feel like the editors must have been like Steven you gotta get rid of it nah but I like it though it's cool it's interesting but it pulls the reader out of the story so you gotta like remove it I'll go jump in a hole because I'm Stephen flipping King I could do whatever I want but getting back to Susanna's story, it's not bad and I think it's fairly fun, you know? But what I really love about the story is the other story, which is with Roland and Eddie. Because it, while that one is really, really confusing and I don't like the locations it specifically goes to because the names and the stuff like that, it's really confusing. I don't know what time zone we are in for like a good long time because I, I wasn't paying attention at the beginning. But I feel like it should have been slightly established a little bit more. And you know, the locations are really confusing me because I I can't, I, when I imagine books, I don't imagine pictures. And so it's really weird for me to kind of understand what's going on. And there's no clues hidden later on because I'm just really confused about locations. But what happens in that story is the characters, which is like maybe best S tier Stephen King quality. Because those two meet one person and you already know who the person is if you've read the book. And if you don't know who it is, you're waiting for like a really big surprise because I absolutely enjoyed that so much. I got right to that and literally at that point I could not stop reading because it was so much, it was like, it was like fan fiction. It was, it was exactly what I wanted to see. It was perfect. I've always wanted to read something like this. I just didn't know I wanted to read something like this. It's perfect and every, like, I just, it's, that part is just so purely fun and so, you know, fan servicey that I just, I cannot believe it. It's so much fun. And at the end of the book, we get that big, big, interesting plot turn, that big left, right turn. We get that weird old get out of it. Like I'm saying that we do something very unexpected and that's what I'm trying to say, but it's really good unexpected. And I know that it, once you read that, it sort of justifies the entire book. And you're like, okay, I see why this book had to exist instead of just like plopping it into like Wolves of the Cala or like the Dark Tower, you know? It has to exist on its own because that is really like something that makes it its own book. This can't just happen in another book. This defines the book. And it's like the last line in the book. So I remember I was like looking through trying to like see what's going on, not just reading it. And I got to the end and I'm like, there's something really bold to print. And I know Stephen King loves to do that. So I looked at it for a second. I just closed it. I didn't read it. I'm like, this is going to be important, clearly. And it was one of the last lines in the book. And I was very, very, I wanted to read it because I'm like, okay, well, what? usually last lines don't matter. If you go to like the end of any book, the last line doesn't really matter. It's just like, they lived happily ever after. I'm like, okay, well, duh, that's going to happen. But this one, do not at all go to the end, look at it whatsoever. It's really in bold print. Your eyes will not miss it. You'll just read through it and you'll spoil 
everything. To finish off on that, I think all the characters in the story were fine. I think that the character Eddie and Roland met up with was the most interesting of them all. And Eddie and Roland's, you know, story itself wasn't that great. It was kind of boring, but it had some really fun emotional beats, specifically with Tower, with Calvin Tower. That one was really, really fun. I really enjoyed that, actually. But everything else to do with it, like the locations that they went, they're going this way, they're going that, something happened to them where they were floating. It was it's so annoying. Like, I, I couldn't understand it at all. It was, seemed really dumb. And whenever a story is filled with that kind of stuff, like I feel like Wolves of the Cala was, it just gets so boring because I don't understand it. I don't feel like it's interesting. I don't feel like it's important. All that stuff has gone down the drain. Wink, wink, hint, hint. I mean that in reference to it, not like this book. But essentially, I think this is one of the best books in the entire series because of just how fun that one character is and how we get a lot of done stuff, you know, just short period of time, get it done with, move on. And I'm really happy I actually read this book because I really would not have read it for a long time if I hadn't pushed myself. So that is essentially my review. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And if you did, please hit that like button down below. Let me know if it was useful to you. If you're going to read this book, if you've already read the book, let me know what your thoughts are on this book because I would love to hear about it. I know a couple of my subscribers have been reading The Dark Tower as I go along as well. So, I, I you know, I, I'm really actually interested in hearing your stories because, you know, I've talked to a lot of you. And you're all actually like, really interesting. So if you want to go ahead, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the series so far. If you think what you think of my reviews, if you think of my of the books that I've already read, you can compare them to your own thoughts. Anything like that. Personally, this is my favorite. A lot of people don't like it. So I'm, it's going to be very interesting to hear your thoughts. I actually began this book a little bit, and then I like put it aside instead, so, so I could read like Good Omens, because I was really like again tired of the fantasy king stuff. Because this is not my favorite, but. I will be getting on with it, and then as soon as I finish this up, I will be going on doing a full Dark Tower review, spoiler review, and then a spoiler free review, and I will also be doing a ranking of all the Dark Tower books, which I will do each three videos, or a total of three videos on all of them. So we get like that. Perhaps I'll go into it and do like a spoiler review of like each individual book, but I doubt that. Who knows? Let me know what you want to see of like a full review of the series, whatever, any of that stuff. Go, go ahead, let me know. If any of you want to maybe do a discussion on it, I don't know, you know, like I could get you on Hangouts, we could talk about it, we could do something. Anyway, just let, let me know your ideas down below. I, I This is the, like the first series I finished on camera, and so this is kind of exciting for me. be finishing this and I'll finish Stormlight as well, and we'll do the same thing for that, but I have a lot more planned for Stormlight because it's a lot like more famous. So that's happening soon. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!